Okay, well, let's just get started then. Production party is out. Right, well, thanks very much for joining me here for this live stream. I'm going to be doing a little bit of work on some picks, um, as the title suggests. Before we jump in and kind of get into the pick making process, I thought I'd kind of show you a few things I've had on the, uh, so on the bench recently. So grab some picks here, kind of show you the sort, sort of thing that's coming out of the uh, coming out of the workshop at the minute. Um, been experimenting with a few different sort of shapes, um, shapes and sizes for, for a while. And I've got some new material uh, past couple of weeks, which I really like the way it's, uh, it's turning out. So the sort of shapes of pick that I'm, I'm making at the minute, um, things like, sorry, the, the camera is in sort of in reverse for me. Um, this is sort of like a standard sort of shape, like a, what we'll call like a three five one pick, sort of like your standard size sort of pick that you'd you'd get at uh, over the counter at your at a, at a guitar store. Um, got those in a few different colours. So the red one, that one is quite cool because if I do that with the light, it glows. Yeah, you know, got some glow in the glow in the dark material there. Um, the one I tend to be concentrating on most of these are like what call like I'm calling a small standard. So if you get on with like um, uh, like a Jazz Three, Jazz XL, um, or big stubby sort of thing, they're a little bit slightly smaller than your regular three five one type pick. Um, a little bit more rounded. <clears throat> so I've got those. That's like the Cyclone Blue. Couple here. This is uh, called the Toxic Green. I really like the pattern. On, on that one. Uh, this one, very pretty. Don't know how well the camel showed up. It's got like a metallic sort of thing. It's like some gold, gold sort of patterns in there. Um, rather, rather cool purple and yellow. And I've also been oh, on these ones as well. This is called what's called Sunspot Orange, which is like an orange with like a nice red streak through it. Kind of puts me in mind of Ziggy Sadatas actually. Um, oh, this one as well. This is so the some of the material has like you know colors running through it. Other times you get a patch where there's not so much, but still you get a little bit of sort of like a like a marbling sort of effect, which is quite pretty. Uh, and also been working on things with like a, a drilled grip pattern, so like drilling drilling holes to the the top of the pick. This is this material is called kyrenite. It's a type of acrylic. It's pretty grippy. It's unusual. It's that it's shiny material you polish it up but you still get a really good grip with it on your hands when you with your hands when you're playing guitar but some people certainly one guy a friend of mine called marcus i know he he was saying that he, even with the acrylic he finds it difficult to grip picks so i've been making a few have like different patterns of holes uh drilled into them helps you to get a get a grip on them and another shape i've been working on um which i quite like these so these shield shape picks so quite pointy um really good for like precise you know control picking very sharp point on there if you want all of the edges are playable so you can rotate it around and use that as a slightly thicker uh like less acute picking uh picking angle if you want to use them for those uh that was one i was experimenting with with the in the dark material with like a big big grip hole in which is i'm finding i'm finding pretty comfy and making these with all sorts of different sort of variations so even like these small standards um i'm not sure well we're a little short on the camera this one's got quite a sharp tip on it whereas this one's a little bit more rounded this one very rounded and it's all to do with kind of how the um how the pick hits the string how it interacts with it how it transfers energy from the pick into the string, you get something maybe a little bit louder if you're using a sharp tip, something a bit softer and a bit more mellow if you're using a more rounded tip like that. Tiny, tiny little differences in the the pick material, uh, sorry, the pick shape um, can make a surprisingly big difference for how it feels in the hand. You know, when you're holding it, if that if that's just a little bit fatter or a little bit narrow or whatever, it does it has quite an effect on the playing experience. Um, so horses, of course, so I'm offering sort of loads of those in the on the online shop at the minute. But this isn't meant to be uh, an advertorial. This is meant to be live pick making. 
So something I've not done before on the live stream. So I'll just put those off to one side. Kind okay, of get some tools over here, and we'll get started. Uh, oh God, far too much stuff and tools and things hanging on the back of the bench. Uh, right. I'm going to kind of be working on a little bit of board, basically, because this creates loads of dust, so see, it's a bit easier. I can clear up. I can just take this, this board and uh, board away and uh, chuck everything in a bit. Excuse me, quick drink of tea. Okay, so the pick I'm working on tonight is a, in order uh, for a guy. It was Joey who ordered some picks from me through the online shop. Uh, on Etsy. Now, a couple of those went missing in the post rather rather annoyingly. Um, USPS seems to, well, the address label turned up, but none of the pack, rest of the package or the picks turned up for, for Joey, so I'm having to make a couple of replacements. So this is kind of where the process starts off. This is a piece of material called Kyranite. It's a type of acrylic. It's got like a different material, uh, colour acrylic kind of swirled through, so you get this nice like marbly sort of pattern. What I've already done with that is I use a coping saw, you know, one of these, one of these things, and and cut out a basic shape. That's just a rough cut. It's an incredibly rough cut because when I was cutting this out, uh, to be perfectly honest, I I was using a blade that was really really blunt. Normally, I'd be able to get a much better shape than that, but the the, the saw was just all over the place. So what I'm going to do is basically mark out exactly the shape that I need to work to, and I'm going to file down to get the basic shape. So kind of talk you through the, show you the process of what goes into uh, into making one of these uh, one of these picks. So what I'm going to do is use a template. This is a three five one shape pick, which is what I'm working on tonight. Hopefully my hands aren't going to get in the way of the camera too much. It was difficult to find a, a good angle to put the camera where you can see what I'm doing. So just get a nice sharp pencil, line the pick up on the piece of material, and I'm just going to draw around that with pencil. Just slightly there. But... So hopefully you can see on there there's a pencil outline which I can which I can now work to. This is quite a, a labour-intensive process. People often get a bit perturbed about paying lots of money for picks, but hopefully when you see the sort of work that goes into to making a, a like a handmade pick like this, you'll realise where kind of where the where the money goes. It's not a five minute uh, five minute job. Um, usually it takes me about an hour or so, depending on depending on my mood, uh, depending if I make any mistakes as I go. So that's basically what the pick's going to look like. This looks like a beast of a file. And it's quite big. It's got a just the right sort of coarseness of cut. It works really, really well for me. And I like the way it feels. It's probably a bit bigger than I really ought to be using. It's a better, a better size for a job like this. But when I first started getting into experimenting with making picks, I'm just basically what I'm doing here is just filing down to, to get rid of that. To, basically going down and just getting rid of that pencil line. Uh, when I first started experimenting with making picks, uh, I was just basically using whatever tools I had in my toolbox, and I had this file. And I kind of persevered with it, and for all it looks a little large and a little inelegant, it actually works really, really well for me. I've kind of got used to it now. And like I said, the, the coarseness of the cut on it is just about right for like the initial shaping of the pick like this. So as I say, I'm taking it down basically to the pencil line, maybe leave a fraction of the line still showing. Because when I drew around the template, that basically gives me like the very, very outside, just on the outside edge of the pick. Um, so if I file down to that as part of the basic shape, then what I can do is when I put the edge, I'm going to go around and finesse the edge and put the playing edge on and bevel it and all that. It'll take a little bit, like a fraction of a millimetre off the off the size. So we'll end up with something that's pretty much the right size. These are all handmade. I don't really use power tools. Uh, the only time I use anything where you would, you know, anything you plug in, apart from the light above me, the only thing that ever gets plugged in is, a, is a, can you use a, a hand drill, like a, a cordless uh, electric drill for putting the, the holes into those those gripped picks. 
everything else is done by hand. You know, no bad saws or anything, but cutting out material, I use that 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 coping saw. Everything's filed by hand, sanded, shaped, polished by hand. I'll kind of show you all of the processes as we as we go through. So grab yourself a beverage and sit in. We'll have a bit of a bit of a live pick making session and just a bit of a, a general chat about guitars and picks and whatnot. So yeah, there's another uh, another type of pick which I didn't have any to show you because I uh, I had a few in stock but they went off to the new owner in the post this morning. Um, some signature picks for a guitar player called Pat Buzzard, a friend of mine who uh, came to me. I gave him some early like prototype picks which he was quite taken with. But he's he's a he's a larger fellow. He casts a he casts a large shadow as Pat, and he wanted a slightly larger pick than even like the standard size like this. And he had one uh, was like, that he uses, which is quite a, like a regular triangle shape, like an equilateral triangle, with sort of like three playing points on it. But it's about an inch and a quarter top to bottom, so quite a size. Um, so I made a, a, a few picks for him like that, which he absolutely loved, and made another batch, which I thought so I'm going to put, put them in, into stock on the online shop, see if he likes them. Uh, so see if he, he wanted any before they went into the into the online shop, and he actually said, "Yeah, look, I'll take the lot." So I don't have any stock buzzard picks to show you tonight. But like I say, if you have a look on the uh, uh, Instagram, I uh, often post pics of guitars and, and whatnot. But there's more and more photos of uh, photos of picks going on there. You'll be able to see the the, the full buzzard signature picks that I. Uh, I posted on there. I think it was just last night. So, uh, thanks for anyone who's joining joining this live. Uh, I'm not too sure what time it is where you are. So, Saturday, nine p.m. here in the UK. So, if you're watching in the UK, thank you for joining me. I'm sure you have much better things to be doing on a Saturday night and sitting in front of YouTube watching me filing a piece of plastic. But thank you for joining me anyway. If you're joining me from further afield, well, thank you very much for joining me from all the way wherever you are. Okay, so that that's starting to that's starting to shape up nicely on on that side. So already you should be getting an idea, kind of how much uh, how much work goes into uh, into one of these. It's not like an injection molded thing where you just you know throw some stuff into the machine, press a button, and the and a pick and the pick pops out. There's a bit of manual labour involved here as well. Yeah. And if you're uh, if you're watching this on the replay, I'm, I'll leave the, the, the video on YouTube. For all this is a live stream, I'll leave the, the video kind of on the channel if anybody wants to uh, watch it on the replay. And if you are watching it on the replay, you're very welcome. So thank you very much. If you are watching live and you want to join in on the comments even if it's just to say hello let me know where it is you're watching from that would be really really cool okay now i'm just checking my uh, spec sheet here because this is say uh, this is a replacement for um a pick that went missing and missing in the u.s mail to a customer called uh, joey um but he made place two orders with me one of them which arrived yesterday um and he actually kind of changed the spec for what he wanted based upon the, the order that he did receive. And so I'm working on here something with a sharp tip, a hard tip edge, and a hard bevel. So I'll, as I'm kind of going through the process, I'll explain to you what those, those different features are. Um, but basically, I need to take this to a, a fairly sharp, a fairly sharp point is the important thing. As I said before, the, the tip shape has a big impact on how the, the pick sounds. Sharp tip concentrates all of your picking energy to a, a single single place. And uh, gives you, I think, a, a stronger tone. Certainly it's louder. And uh, I've got a friend who plays guitar synth and he finds uh, picks with a very um, sharp tip give you a much better um, better performance with guitar synths. Yeah, guitar synths can be a bit uh, awkward if you, you're a bit sloppy and uh, they can kind of give you ghost notes or whatever, but he, so he finds the, uh, the whole experience with a um, uh, sharp tip to pick, it gives him better performance. So I've lost the line that I'm cutting to on that side, so I'm just gonna remark 
Very mock the work. I know somebody who, uh, when he's working on, on picks, uh, seeing him doing some work, and basically he has the, the, the basic shape marked out um, with a piece of masking tape and basically works to that. And I found, I tried that, I just found the masking tape kind of got in the way a little bit. I prefer just to work direct with the marks directly on the uh, on the material. There's no, I'm sure there's no right way or, or wrong way of doing it. It's just kind of what works best for you or whatever tools you're using. So that's starting to shape up now. That's now starting to look like a pick rather than a piece of piece of raggedy plastic, which is nice. So as you can tell, this isn't the thinnest material in the world. These these blanks, like I was kind of showing you before, get these as, as sheets. Um, they were pieces I get are about an eighth of an inch thick, uh, which is just over three millimeters. But by the time I've uh, worked the, the pick and kind of sanded the, the surface down as part of getting a polish on it, it comes out at about three millimeters or uh, a fraction over. You know, these things are all handmade, so there's nothing, there's nothing super super precise in any of uh, in any of this. I, as is the nature with uh, with anything with anything handmade. Aha, Sam! Thanks for joining me. Good to see you, Sam Monkey Fist. There, one of uh, one of a, a regular a regular commenter on uh, on my YouTube videos. And by regular, I mean somebody who leaves nice comments as opposed to people who just hurl abuse at me and call me names and all that sort of bad thing that comes from comes from having an online presence. Okay, so nearly there, I think, with the, the basic shaping on this. So it's a slightly curved shape going down to uh, down towards the down towards the tip. Yeah, it's a little bit raggedy just on just on the edge there, but uh, that will that will come off when I put the it's just just on the surface that will come off when I uh, when I put the bevel on. So I'll be shaping uh, shaping obviously at a, at a basically forty five degree angle along the uh, along the playing edge of the pick. So the thing just to check for here is is it nice and symmetrical? It's not. I need to take a little bit more off here. This material is really difficult to work with sometimes uh, for, for getting uh, a perfectly symmetrical pick because you've got the pattern in the material. It kind of draws the eye sometimes and can have a bit of an optical illusion that something at first glance looks looks symmetrical, but it's not. It's because the eye is kind of being drawn one way or another uh, by, the, uh, by the pattern in the material. So this is just quite a coarse file. So it's taken a fair bit of, uh, you can see that the pile of dust takes a fair bit of material off in a single pass. So when I'm getting down to just doing the final sort of getting the shape right end of things, fairly light, light touch on the work. So I'm not taking off huge, huge chunks of material. Don't want to be, don't want to be doing that. Oh, sorry, I went off at a, went off at a bit of a tangent there. Yeah, so these, these picks, they're about three millimetres thick is the finished article. And that's a bit of an acquired taste. When you first start playing thick picks, you think, ah, oh, this is this is too big. It feels like a, you know, a big lump and hammer or something in your hand you know, if you're used to something, you know, something like this, which is you know, fraction, you know, a fraction of a millimetre thick, or, you know, like sounded like a heavy, a heavy celluloid pick is about a millimetre thick. Which isn't very, which isn't very much compared to like three mil like this. You know, this has no give in it at all. But conversely, this actually actually is a bit more sensitive to play with. It's uh, it's got no give to it. So it means every piece of every piece of energy that you put into playing the guitar is transferred from the pick into the strings. There's no give in the pick. There's no energy lost as the pick's flexing. 
the best description I had was from uh, John Tron Davidson over at the Heavy Wrapping Platform blog. I, I interviewed him earlier this year. The video for that interview is on the, on the YouTube channel somewhere. And he gave a really good analogy. He says, it's, it's like playing with a compressor. If you're playing with a pick that's got some bend in it and you really, you know, you really dig into the strings, if that pick has so much energy, it's going to, it's going to start bending and not transferring the energy into the strings. It's a bit like if you're playing with a compressor and it just says, whoa, that's too loud. I'm going to take some of the, some of the energy away. So a pick like this, big, thick pick, actually gives you better picking dynamics. Not to everybody's taste, but it's something that's worth, it's worth uh, persevering with. Certainly, a few people I've, I've given sample picks to have been incredibly impressed and very, very pleasantly surprised with, with how, how the material works and how the shape of a pick, pick works, uh, works for them. Pat Buzzard, who I was talking about before, the guy who I sent those, those signature picks to, he is just completely converted to the heavier, the heavier pick. And he was saying to the point that he actually feels certain things are easier to play um, than they were with the picks he was using before. So I take that as a, a vote of confidence. Okay, so there's something now that's, that's starting to look pretty pick-like. So pleasing pile of pile of dust there and we've got pick i do like i do like the way this the the yellow and the yellow and purple material that does look very pretty when this is polished up it looks absolutely absolutely gorgeous so the next step here is i'm going to put the playing edge on so this is the, the like the playing tip i'm going to do a bevel at about 45 degrees now the spec for this is a hard bevel pretty much like a 45 degree angle uh, I'll really finesse that at the next stage. But for now, I'm just going to use the file. Again, this looks like a big, big oversized uh, piece of kit for doing what I'm doing, but it does actually work quite well. So I've got the I've got the hang of it now. It just takes off just the right amount of material. So I was going to go in, place it at about a 45 degree angle to the work, and just basically I'm putting a 45 degree ish bevel. And I'm taking this down so that the outside edge of the bevel is halfway down the side of the pick. It's making passes, having a look each time as to how much, how much material I'm taking off. I don't want to take too much off because if I take too much off, I have to address the, redress the balance on the other side and the pick will start to get a little bit narrow. So looking at it edge on, that's getting on for halfway. It just needs a little bit more. Try and keep that nice and uniform as much as I can. So yeah, that's the start of the playing edge. I'm happy with that. This isn't a super fine file, so it's going to leave a little bit of uh, a little bit of marks and whatnot in the in the material, but that's no problem. I've got a finer file here which I'll go through and do the do some some other work with. Let's do the other side of the bevel now. So I apologize if you haven't got the best seat in the house. I was experimenting with setting the setting a camera up. Um, so the, the best view really was a camera over my shoulder, but I couldn't quite get that for basically with tripod and whatever kit I've got to hand. So this is a, a webcam plugged into my laptop, which I'm not used to using for live streaming. Normally if I do live streams on, on Facebook, it's up in the studio with a big desktop PC. And the and camera sort of attached to that. They're using the laptop just down here on the workbench. And uh, slightly different setup. And uh, so you see the camera is attached to a tripod and cables going across the bench. But hopefully you, you get enough of a view of what I'm doing to get an idea. Really, this is just give you a, a, a flavor for what goes into to making a pick. And sort of explain you know, the the effort involved. You know, it's like some almost like to justify why these picks kind of why these these things why are these things expensive. It's because you know, well, time is money. It, you know, there's a lot of effort and time goes into this, especially like me. You're doing it, you're doing it all by hand. So we'll move on to the other side. Because people are often saying, well, why why should I be buying you know big expensive um, big expensive picks like this? 
And on Gudan Guitar Shop, there's a load of different types of pick on the counter. I can pick them up for like, what, 50p a time? Pound for a pack of three, something like that. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with those picks. They certainly do the job. I mean, if you look at something like a you know, Jim Dunlop, like a yellow Tortex or a green Tortex, you know, they're probably the best-selling picks on the market. Loads of people use them. It doesn't mean they're the best. It just means they're the most ubiquitous. They're the easiest to go out to a shop and buy. Similar way that, you know, it's more people drive Ford Mondeos than drive Aston Martins. It doesn't mean that the Ford Mondeo is a better driving experience or a better car than the Aston Martin. It just means it's very good at being affordable and accessible and whatever town you go to, there's going to be a Ford dealer where you can go and buy a Mondeo, whereas Aston Martins are a little harder to come by. But I know which, which driving experience I'd, I'd rather have. And for the record, if anyone from Aston Martin happens to be watching this either live or on repeat and wants to sponsor me, give me a car, let the record show, I'd be perfectly happy to accept one. Okay, so that, that playing edge, that bevel edge now is starting to come together. And smooth that out. And what I'm going to work on now, I think, is kind of getting the, the edge around the, the, around the rest of the pick. It doesn't have to be such a hard bevel. That's going in what the part that's going to be held in the hand. So that can be a little bit softer, a little bit more organic. The spec here is for a hard, hard bevel and uh, a hard tip on the pick. But uh, the rest can I say, be a little bit softer and a little bit more organic. So I'm just checking this now for symmetry, you know, making sure that I've got a similar sort of amount of bevel similar length of the pick on each side, similar size kind of shoulders on it. Again, not wanting to take too much off. So as the shape kind of comes together using finer uh, or like a lighter pass with the, with this file, because this file is a little bit coarse. So using slightly finer, uh, lighter touch with it. So I'm getting a finer cut. And now start to, to work around the edge of the pick and just soften off that, that hard edge. So really it's just a case of putting the pick on the bevel and following it around, kind of at a 45 degree angle, but it's a more, I don't know, organic, natural sort of sweeping motion with my hand because I want this to be soft, rounder sort of edge as opposed to the hard, bevel of the playing edge. The top part, part of the pick is about being held. It's about, it's about comfort as opposed to how the, how the pick strikes the string. And by rights, this, this file is way too big for what I'm doing, but I'm used to it now. It's comfortable. I like the amount of material it, it, it takes off and I'm kind of used to the balance of it now. So for all it looks, looks a little bit oversized. It does the job for me. Probably worth giving a, a bit of a shout out to a, a couple of people who've kind of helped me significantly on my, my journey into the Plectroverse. First off, I've got to mention John Tron Davidson. I mentioned just before actually from the Heavy Repping Plectrum blog. I interviewed him for the channel, uh, let's say, earlier this year and had a good long conversation about picks. And having talked to him, it made me think 